Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and it is the New Year's, and I have a lot of stuff happening on my show this morning. Um, Missoula Aging Services is here. Meals on Wheels um, coordinator Colleen and Larry are here to talk about uh, the Meals on Wheels program, so we'll hear more about that. Uh, I got uh, new programs happening this week, so uh, some of the new stuff that will be pr uh, premiering and airing on MCAT. I have some. Um, I have a special video from MCPS Fall Winter Concert, so kind of like a little montage for you guys. I have uh, my uh, Lego Anthology stop motion video. Also, I have um, dubbing stuff. Another episode of that, and I have a uh, brand new art clip for you guys today later in the show. But uh, first, let's talk about some New Year's resolutions. Uh, I had a new Year's, New Year's resolution to grow a beard, and I did. You gotta aim low for your New Year's resolution to have it happen. Um, but let's talk about um, the weather. It is going to be cold out, people. Uh, right now, it is about negative 10 degrees, but of course, uh, that's uh, based from the airport. Uh, thanks, Larry, for giving me a little heads up on that that may be the uh, case. Um, but today, you can expect your high to be about 7 degrees outside, your low to be negative 14 degrees. Uh, Thursday is going to be the coldest day of the week with a high of 1 degree and its low of negative 7. So you guys stay warm out there because um, if you make it to, this, to Saturday, um, things will start warming up. It's going to be partly sunny this Saturday. So it might not be a high of 15. It might be a little bit warmer uh, because it's going to be partly sunny and the clouds will keep in some of the warmth. But uh, Let's talk about some snow stuff. So if you guys are um, into uh, doing some outdoor uh, snow recreation, you guys can um, go to Whitefish Mountain Resort. They just got some three inches of snow in the last 72 hours. Um, Big Sky Resort has about two inches in the last 72 hours, uh, 32 to 48 base. Um, snow Bowl has no new snow, but it says it's green to go. Um, you have the Great Divide, which had four inches of fresh powder in the last 72 hours, and it sh shows that it's green to go. Lost Trail, uh, two inches in the last 72 hours. It looks like we have a lot of stuff, um, but of course, Discovery Ski Area hasn't had any snow, and it seems that there is some warning out there, so you may need to call ahead if you guys are planning on going to Discovery sh um, Ski Area. And then Showdown Montana had a, a one inch of fresh snow in the last 72 hours. And that was your uh, your little On the Snow report, and I got that from uh, onthesnow.com. Um, up next, we got, uh, let's see, um, let's see. I'm speeding right along. So I'll bring out uh, our guests on momentarily. So uh, without further ado, here is a nice PSA from the Missoula Asian Services. And when we come back, we'll have Meals on Wheels with Colleen and Larry. A great day for me includes a walk outside with my wife. My great day includes reading a good book. A great day for me includes the morning crossword puzzle. My great day includes playing the piano. As you grow older, Missoula Aging Services can help direct your aging journey with a new Options for Better Aging program. Give them a call at 728-7682 to find out more. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. At Missoula Aging Service. Hey guys, we're here with Colleen and Larry, and they're here to talk about Meals on Wheels program. So tell uh, some of the viewers out there who don't know what Meals on Wheels are uh, for us. So our Meals on Wheels program, we serve homebound adults here in Missoula County. Uh, last year we served the most meals ever that we ever have. We served over 100,000 meals last year. That's a lot. Yep, it sure <laughs> is. And so our, our program is geared to, again, serve people who are homebound, whether it's a, a temporary homebound status, say a person had had a hip replacement surgery and they know that they will not be able to get to the grocery store, not be able to stand to do food prep for throughout their recovery. Well, that's when Meals on Meals can come in and help out and we'll bring them a good nutritious <laughs> meal. Great, yes. uh, you, you also came on here, you're looking for volunteers, you're always looking for um, new people to uh, take on some of the routes here, yep. but uh, specifically uh, you are asking for a, a particular type of volunteer. Yes, I'm looking for more substitute volunteer drivers like Larry here. So we have 16 routes, 
uh, typically we serve about 300 meals a day. And so each route has about, we, we try to keep them around 20 uh, clients per route. And many of our volunteer drivers have a fixed route. But right now we're looking for substitute drivers, people who I can call uh, in the morning and say, hey, are you available to drive the rural route five from East Missoula to Clinton? Are you available to do that today? And just be able to pick up and come on in, get their manifest, plug it into their GPS and use the maps and go and get people their food. Cool, and we have firsthand experience on what yes. it's like to be that kind of volunteer. So Larry, what, what can you tell me about your experiences as a floater? Well, the nice thing about being a, a floater or a substitute is I know all the routes now, and um, and I also get to meet all the people. And even though I don't see them every day or every week, um, after doing it six years, I seem to know all of the all of the clients or the majority of the clients. And it's mm -hmm. like seeing an old friend for for a second time, you know, in in say a week or a week and a half, and and uh, be able to talk to them and and not just um, like the the 20 people a normal route would give, but uh, um, to the, the 300 people that we see every day. So I, my, uh, my knowledge of the people that we serve is uh, pretty big now. Yeah. Uh, and that's enjoyable. I, it's like seeing new friends all the time. Cool. And you know, another thing too, with, you know, of course, first our, our priority is to get the correct meal to the correct person. Many of our folks have dietary restrictions. But what's also equally as important is the daily check-in that our volunteers provide. So when Larry goes and brings a meal, he will, just like he says, he'll, he'll leave a check-in like an old friend and say, hey, you know, how, how are things going? It sounds like your cold is going away, that's great, you know? And, and are able, they're able to communicate to me if there is perhaps another need that a, a person may have, a client may have, whether it's changing their meal or if perhaps they need some assistance with uh, getting to medical appointments, things like that, our volunteers report to me, and then I can contact colleagues at Missoula Aging Services to get people the services that they need. So oh. it's a, it's super important that daily check in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, they, the clients seem to like it as well. Mm -hmm. Very much. So. Well, let's talk a little bit about the clients. Uh, what, what, what variety of uh, clients do you guys work with? Well, again, the, the primary qualifier to receive Meals on Wheels is that a person is homebound to a certain degree. And so we will serve um, uh, adults who are over the age of 60. We serve clients, we have clients in their 90s. We also have uh, what I call underage adults, Meals on Wheels clients who are 18 to 59, but are, again, are homebound to some degree so that uh, we're able to bring in the meals to them to help keep their nutrition good and healthy. Cool. Well, uh, what are some of the uh, um, ex um, experiences of some of your drivers um, with uh, some of these routes? Oh gosh. Anywhere yeah, from luck. going off a road yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the winter time, especially yeah. um, uh, finding somebody that's uh, that is actually in a in a situation that's an emergency where. You're the first one on the first one there, mm -hmm. and you're able to uh, uh, summon help. Which is, I mean, the whole the whole project is rewarding as far as a driver. But those are the situations where you really even feel much much better about what you're doing because yeah. you are helping immensely to somebody that needs it. Yeah. Um, but you know, every person that you serve, you're you're helping them out. Yeah. And uh, and they are appreciative. And that's it's a rewarding for yourself and it also all of our volunteers also in whatever given situation they may they come up they are living our our agency's mission which is to promote the independence dignity and health of older adults and those who care for them so when a person has a need and the first person that they're seeing perhaps the only person that they're seeing that day is their meals on wheels driver they know that they can go to them and say i need i need some assistance here could you please get a hold of somebody or if it is an emergent situation they know that the driver can call 911 yep. just like that and they will stay with them until the emts arrive cool um is there anything else uh, i haven't really touched on um Maybe, uh, uh, where can people find more information? Yes, you can always come to our Missoula Aging Services website, www.missoulaagingservices.org. And if you'd like to be a volunteer, uh, you can get an online application there. 
or you can go to Missoula Aging Services at 337 Stevens um, and get that information, get the, the volunteer application process rolling. Cool. Well, uh, thanks, uh, Colleen mm -hmm. and Larry, for joining me this morning. Yeah, um, thank you. It, um, it, they're looking for drivers. They're looking for uh, uh, substitute drivers to uh, take up the uh, the reins yes. of of driving for people who are in need of uh, meals to have delivered to their home. Yep. So thanks for joining me, guys. And yep, thank you. And we'll be right back right after this. You bet. Thanks. Thanks, Larry. Mm -hmm. But the house is interesting to have a little bit of distance from the pros too where you're the editor and you realize that there isn't one ideal way that a piece can come out that you know you might cut the beginning you might change the end it's a little like playing jazz a little bit of you know saxophone works here and a little I know nothing about jazz and David knows a lot <laughs> a little bit of this instrument works there but there's not you know one ideal way and I think that helps as a writer to remember that when you're receiving edits that like what I had in my mind isn't the only way, and I want to have some kind of conversational give and take with I this. I definitely editor. have a, like, a how and why outlook on the world, right? So I spent the last three days and I felt like, why is this like this? Why is this like this? Why does my planet do this? <laughs> and that's why they like put me in the hotel room and let me stay at the house anymore. Um, so I think, <laughs> so I really do believe that the, the things I learned as an engineer and the way that I have about looking at problems and questioning, holding curiosity. Uh, is something that I bring to this as a, a facilitator and educator, uh, but by no means thought that this is where I would be. And so I think that if anything, it is it is a curiosity I have to understand how the world works that has really informed then the way that we have developed our educational curriculum. I have no idea how I ended up doing this. <laughs> scales are used in traditional medicine, the scales, and the meat is eaten as a high status illegal food. And oh. both are equally important in the illegal trade. Um, part of the advocacy that Save Vietnam's Wildlife is doing has been successful to take the scales, payment for the scales off insurance. It was actually covered by insurance, and it's no longer. So that's going to help. But um, raising awareness about the fact that it has no proven actual benefits, and then raising awareness about how damaging the meat trade is for the species is what they're trying to do. Not only was he visually creative, but he was very glib with words. For instance, his UM classes were so captivating that the general public would show up and they would uh, just drift in. And at first he tried to keep them out but, uh, and tell them to leave. And they kept coming, so he just finally gave up. He just um, let the whole herd in. After all, we were paying tuition, and they were all getting on Scott. Hey, welcome back, and we got a lot more show, but of course, I am here to talk about where you guys can get more information about Wake Up Missoula. You can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. Be sure to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. You could like us on our Facebook page, and of course, you can always follow us on Twitter. I'll, I promise I will tweet you back. MCAT.org is a great resource for you guys to see those kind of programs and more by logging on to MCAT.org. Excuse me. Um, channel 189 is our public producing channel where anybody who uh, comes in MCAT can produce and air their own content. And channel 190 is our civic channel where we can um, 
uh, <laughs> I don't know what we do. No, I'm just kidding. It's the city council. We, we do city council meetings, uh, school board meetings, uh, county commissioners meetings, health boards, all sorts of committee meetings that are happening. And I will have more information about what kind of committee meetings are happening today. There was no city council meeting on Monday, so I have nothing to talk about on that. But I want to talk a little bit more before I talk about city council. Mm, bear with me. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Saturday animation. Saturday stop in animation Saturday drop in there's like 500 different names for it just d just uh just trust us on this it is um stop animation drop in at Missoula Community Access Television um it's every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. it's only $10 it gives kids an opportunity to make their own stop animation movie. And I do have a stop animation movie to help um, kind of like maybe uh, inspire you at home or anyone watching online to uh, get on it, to come on down to uh, Missoula Community Access Television and make their own little stop animation short. Um, I'll teach you guys how to um, do stop motion, take pictures, move items slightly, take pictures, and then also add some sound and some music to make it um, – bring it to life so uh here is my uh another episode of scott scott's um stop motion anthology um it's called reckoning so you know why i brought you here well it's because i asked too many questions you know the interesting thing is i don't care no more q a no more questions no more answers this is a reckoning for what? I was only doing my job. I'm a reporter. I'm supposed to ask questions. I have a question for you. And I thought I was a reporter. <laughs> Did you hear that? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I didn't think that was a really good joke either. You're unbelievable. I'm gonna go check it out. Huh. There doesn't seem to be anything here. Uh, huh? Hello? Uh, what's going on over there? Oh my god. Hello? Hello? Sir, sir, we have an intruder. Then why didn't you take care of him? Can I count on you to do your job? You're a captain. Huh. There doesn't seem to be anyone out here. Let her go, creep. Don't just stand there. Get him! Don't make me repeat myself. Your reckoning is here. I see you got a big stick, too. I've never seen a civilian working with the pirate gang. <laughs> How little you know. I can't wait to break every bone in your body. Better get out of here. The police are coming. Don't move. I got suspect. What the? Freeze! I am not your enemy. Officer, you back up. Ugh. I only have a few seconds now. This man is connected to the pirate gang on a whole new level. Find out what he knows and blow the lid on who or what's pulling the pirate gang's strings. Who? You don't say... Hey, wait, 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 sir, wait, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I got suspect in tow. You check out what's in there. Here's your gun back, sir. <laughs> I'll be out before you know it. Man, shut up. Uh, sir, you're gonna want to look at this. All right, that was a continuation of my stop motion anthology. So if you haven't seen the, any of the previous episodes, that one won't make sense. Um, there's a lot of uh, moving parts going on here, and I ha will have another one happening next Wednesday. Um, uh, then again, um, I'm going to do one more plug of our Saturday drop-in animation. This Saturday, we're back again, and we're going to be doing it pretty much every single Saturday until Memorial Day. So Memorial Day weekend will be the... Um, I, I, it's usually the weekend before Memorial Day weekend. We'll have a little party, and we'll um, have all the footage, all the stop animation movies kind of like compiled up together, and we'll pr big have a big huge screening for all the kids and the parents who wish to hang out and look at some of the projects the kids have made throughout this year. It usually starts uh, September, and then it ends in the May time, and of course we take a bunch of Saturdays off for vacations here and there, but it's going to happen this Saturday 
for the new year, the first official uh, 2017 stop animation drop-in, and it's only $10. And if you're just curious, you can um, do it for only $5 for a half day, and it's for ages 9 to 13 ish so if you're around those ages that's just perfect for you uh for kids to do any stop animation um let's talk uh some okay so uh i have a new art clip for you guys as i promised and it will be ending um january 8th so it's not going to take too long it's not going to be around that much longer um uh, but without further ado here is some of here's a nice little art clip uh, being featured at the zootown arts community center And as you can tell from this uh, shot right here, it's time for some city council. And um, what I'm talking about today is I'm going to be talking about a little tease on what you guys can expect for your uh, Wednesday committee meetings. So let's get started. So today uh, we got uh, some city council. Uh, so it, it it happens during the admin and finance committee meeting. The uh, the approval of police evidence facility acquisition a couple years ago that this um, the uh, um, the p uh, the city uh, police chief came to the city asking for uh, additional funding so they can purchase a new uh, area for uh, their police evidence because there was uh, they showed some pictures and there was like a, a a a main a water main through their evidence locker and they were they were afraid that um, that this would burst and it would ruin a bunch of the evidence in their uh, evidence facility so this t this time around they're looking at uh, facility acquisition so uh, the city uh, approved construction of a new uh, police evidence storage facility in the 2017 CID program. This property, located at 101 North Catlin Street, um, provides warehouse facilities to accommodate the needs of many years and office space for 20 to 25 police department employees. The purchase will provide much needed evidence storage as well as freeing up space downtown, which is currently being leased to accommodate the PD employees. The purchase is much less expensive than a new construction cost would be for the Scott Street property, which would only accommodate evidence storage. And they'll be talking that about that during the admin and finance, during the committee meetings this morning, um, today uh, at the city council chambers. Up next, we got public safety and health. Uh, update from the Missoula uh, City County Relationship Violence Services. So uh, the Missoula um, City County Relationship Violence Services has three programs that serve the city of Missoula. They have the Crime Victim Advocates Program, Just Response, and Healthy Relationships Programs. And um, Chantel uh, Gaynor, uh, um, Jenny Daniel, and Kelly McGuire will give updates on each of these programs. Um, so it's an interesting, um, pr these are a bunch of interesting programs to talk about people who have been um, victims of um, assaults, crimes, and uh, other th uh, things that have affected people either uh, physically or emotionally, and uh, and or both. Uh, moving on, we got Parks and Conversation, Fort Missoula Regional Park Update. So they're uh, f talking about finishing up Phase 1, and I have a nice little picture for you guys. So as you can see, this is what they got done so far at the Fort Missoula Regional Park. This is Phase 1. They haven't started their uh, softball fields yet, but th as you can see in the middle, this is a completely and utterly plastic and fake 
um, field right here. This is supposed to be one of those multi-use fields used for all sorts of different activities, soccer, um, all sorts of different lines, um, rugby. Um, they even have lights, which is really cool. And then, of course, these long fields, really long fields. And you ca as you can tell, uh, here are some of the car sizes in the parking lot on this side. So you can kind of go up to scale on how big a lot of these areas are. And, of course, I'm running my mouse over this particular area. And those are little mounds um, for um, anybody who wants to sit up there and watch any kind of like uh, sporting events in the grass, maybe like the world's longest uh, potato sack race or something like that. But that's what uh, they'll be talking about at the committee meetings um, today as well. Um, I'll be talking about some of the news items that have been affecting right after I show you another uh, fun little uh, video that I've made called Dubbing Stuff, uh, featuring a video which is apparently public domain um, of John Wayne. Meanwhile, in the Old West, <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Have a good time, ma'am. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? You mind your business, jerk. I'll get back in that carriage. <coughs> you want these bags? <coughs> madam, madam, you're home. Welcome home. Welcome home. It's good to see you. Uh, huh? What's going on over here? Well, uh, I, um, um, welcome home, dear. We were just talking about how great it would be. <laughs> After traveling over two weeks in this land of ours, only to come home to a bunch of roughneck cowpokes poking their heads in our home, I want to come home and see no one I don't know. Well, sorry there, ma'am. Just a bunch of us fellas here just kind of gathering around, just talking about cows and stuff. Well, I'm sure you've met John Boy here once or twice. He's one of our best farmhands right here. Pleasure to meet you. He seems like a nice boy, but I'm still mad at you for some reason. I can't explain because you never listen anyways. You're doing a right now. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga, ooga, ooga chaka. How dare you sing that song? Blue Suede has copyright over that song. No, oh, but Mr. Link Talk said we had copyright. Partner. Besides, if I just sing it, YouTube Robot won't be all over us. <gasps> you knew this this whole time, didn't you? Didn't you? You know it that he could just sing that song all willy-nilly? Willy-nilly, Brenda. It's not a question of copyright. It's a question of freedom of speech. You know what I'm saying here? <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Do you want your bags here or upstairs? Well, I'm sure she knows where she can put those bags. Sick burn! Put them where they always go, in the incinerator. This is not the end of this conversation. Copyright is a huge issue that we have to solve. Everything spoken at this moment should be taken seriously Oh. Originality should be the cornerstone of this video, and only this video! Well, that just happened. Um, moving on, uh, let's talk about some of the uh, news items that have been um, plugging our news world. So locally, uh, the first uh, baby born of, in Missoula in the new year was born at 6.30 a.m. Um, they call it Baby Bean. They, that's what they called it. Um, it was the first baby born on Sunday on New Year's Day. The parents, Holly and William, said that they were surprised that no other baby was born that, that during this time of birth. So they're lucky uh, to say that this is going to be an interesting story. Uh, Mountain Water Company just uh, uh, got cold and wet when a water main burst this week in the uh, Linda Vista, Helena Street areas. Um, although they were able to stop it, there is still some um, leakage and some water damage. Um, this leak was attributed to a sewer main project that took place over the summer, according to Logan McGinnis, McInnes, um, engineer with Mountain Water. Um, I stole those stories from KPAX. <laughs> Um, congratulations uh, to Free Cycles for raising the funds needed to acquire the building. They so have um, been trying hard to get 
with a campaign launched last year to raise $1 million, Bob Giordano was managed to raise about over $200 thousand dollars and of course there was a private donor that came up and they said that they would do like a, a, a title leasing so basically uh, free cycles would have free reigns they'd own their property and eventually they would slowly pay off um, their debt to uh, this um, unsung hero that remains uh, that prefers to uh, remain uh, uh, anonymous um, but of course uh, I learned this from Bob himself when I was just walking down the street I was just walking across the street getting a coffee and I was like oh hey Bob how's it going and he was telling me about like uh, <laughs> how e they're happy that uh, they're going to be doing this kind of lease program and yeah good for them um, Free Cycles is a great program um, you guys can find out more information about Free Cycles by going on to freecycles.org it's a great resource for anybody out there who wants to build and own their own bikes and of course if you are interested to in volunteering you can always build bikes for kids in need and again the website is freecycles.org um, in the state the University of Montana lost former president George Dennison this week from non Hodgkin's lymphoma he was 81 years old from 1990 to 2010 uh, Mr. Dennison ran the university during its most prosperous time with two national football titles um, and a major growth of the campus which included like the near Native American Center you got um, the Skaggs building, they renovated that building, and I believe that the building that is shaped like an open book was also uh, one of the um, projects that was um, created under Denison. Um, he also was able to attain 1.3 million square feet, which is 20% of the campus today. Um, now the now the university will be run by uh, Sheila Stearns. Um, she's been running it from mid-December. Uh, uh, Originally, she wanted to uh, get on board in the end of December, but she was able to get in just before. And uh, yeah, I mean, and, it, and she started her job uh, December 12th, according to uh, the university's commissioner's office. Um, and I got that information from the Missoulian and, of course, Facebook, because a lot of people were posting about George Denison along the way. Um, National news, an ethical decision about weakening the Office of Congressional Ethics was under debate from the uh, House with Speaker House uh, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan opposing this vote, um, but a majority of Republican-controlled House to limit this watchdog group. So if you don't know what the, uh, um, ha uh, the uh, Committee of Ethics is, it was in 2008, it was a nonpartisan, independent, um, in tidily charged with reviewing allegations of misconduct against members of the House of Representatives and their staff when appropriate, referring to matters of the Uni United States House Committee. So um, they were talking about limiting, uh, basically weakening this particular uh, branch of the uh, Committee of Ethics, and they did so, um, much to uh, Paul Ryan's, um, the Speaker of the House's uh, opposition to it. Um, Nancy Pelosi said that the statement that House Republicans showed their true colors last night and the toxic uh, dysfunction of Republican Republican House that will do anything to further their special interest agenda, thwart transparency, and undermine the public trust. That's what Nancy Pelosi said. She was the minority Speaker of the House. Um, and, of course, Paul Ryan was just um, easily voted in as Speaker of the House. And if you haven't heard that already, uh, probably the biggest news um, is about that guy dabbing where uh, they were swearing um, Paul Ryan in. And I got this I information from NPR.org and, of course, uh, some of it from Facebook because people were saying how funny it was that um, that young um, whippersnapper was dabbing. Anyways, in the, uh, in the world, Istanbul, a nightclub in Istanbul, was attacked by a man on New Year's Eve, which killed 39 people, uh, wounding 70. New Year's Eve, a time to celebrate, turned into a calculated attack. Uh, and, of course, a video has been circulating of a man silently, um, unsmiling, walking around the uh, Istanbul Square, a very popular uh, site for tourism and people to walk around. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and, yeah, it, he is one of the prime sus suspects. And I found this information from the New York and Denver, New York Times and the Denver Post, along with some of it from the Associated Press. I'm not sure where they are, they are, they are at right now, but the um, – the uh, the search is ongoing. The man allegedly um, attacked all these people at the nightclub, changed his clothes, ditched his gun, and um, took a cab and got away. So uh, just uh, I'll tell you more about it as I learn more about it. And that's about it for um, your uh, a little bit of news, just so you guys know. Um, 
let's talk about some of the events that are happening here in Missoula. Um, First up, uh, we got uh, the Bill of Rights and You exhibit. This is at the Missoula Public Library. Learn about the importance of the Bill of Rights when you stop by the exhibit, the Bill of Rights and You, located at the top floor of the library. This exhibit, which was organized by the National Archives and Records Administration, explores the origin of the first 10 amendments to the United States Constitution and looks at how Americans exercise uh, the rights outlined in the amendments. This exhibit will be featured in the library through February. So you guys can check that all out. Puppet making, if you guys are interested in making a puppet the way you see fit, they'll be making puppets at the Zootown Arts Community Center this afternoon around 3.15. Um, it'll be happening um, It's for $95 and $85 for members Tuesdays uh, 3.15 to 5.30, and it'll be happening from November 29th through January 10th. So if you guys are... Um, just getting started. It's never too uh, late to get started with puppet making. Puppet making, and of course, uh, some of the people who have been already making it in late November will be like, "Oh yeah, I tried that once and it didn't really work out. So you should try this instead." It's like, "Oh, thank you." And that was pretty much it for your uh, the, some of the highlighted events for your Wednesdays. There, there's not too much going on. Um, here's some of the music stuff um, I have here. Here is Sharon in the Groove celebrating the music of Fish. Um, it will be at the Top Hat Lounge at 4.30. Um, Imagine Jam Society is going to be Public Jam and Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Um, country Dance lesson Lessons with Kathy Clark will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 7 p.m. Um, karaoke Contest at the Eagles Lodge at uh, 8.30 p.m. Um, Crap Test at Karaoke is going to be at the Badlander Mill Crate Wednesday, which is ele electronic music at the Palace, 9 p.m. Rocking Country Karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon, 9 p.m. So when you're done doing some country dance lessons with Kathy Clark, you can do that. Um, let's see. Let's talk a bit about Thursday. So tomorrow, um, Thinking Money and How to Have Fun for Free in Missoula, uh, 6 p.m., Missoula Public Library tomorrow as part of the Thinking Money exhibit. The library hosts How to Have Fun Free in Missoula. Uh, this is a discussion about all the free activities the community has to offer. Um, it'll be in the large meeting room tomorrow at 6 p.m. And of course, they may not know, it's gonna be discussion. It, it, it may be just like a couple people know a couple of free events that are happening. There's a bunch of free things happening at the Missoula Public Library, which is great for people who wanna get involved. Um, most events have like, you know, cost of the raw materials, like the Zach is another one of those places that is free, but of course the cost of raw materials are usually offsets the, uh, uh, the instruction costs and all that stuff. Um, uh, another interesting thing that is coming out uh, tomorrow evening is the Hellgate Roller Derby's boot camp. This is their second year they're going to be doing this. This would make, uh, the, uh, according to their uh, synopsis, uh, would make a great <laughs> Christmas gift for anybody who wants to try something new. Uh, try Roller Derby as a New Year's resolution. Uh, they promise that they will have a memorable experience. The second annual Hel uh, Hellgate um, Roller Derby boot camp is an eat eight-week roller derby training camp for new and beginning skill levels. Um, it starts on tomorrow at um, 5.30, and tomorrow will be the only orientation you guys get a chance to actually join the roller derby, because once it starts, you, you can't just jump in the middle. It it's just has to start tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. And then on skates, um, beginning uh, January 11th, practice will be held Wednesdays, um, Wednesday 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. at a Sovereign Hope Gym. It's 1414 North Avenue West. Adults of all ages are welcome to and encouraged to attend. Um, they, it used to be a lot more like women-centric, but now they want more men as well because uh, they've been doing a lot of intramural type stuff. Um, MCAT has, uh, I think, last year, last couple uh, bouts that the uh, Hellgate Roller Girls have done, so you guys get a kind of a, a look and an idea by logging on to MCAT.org and typing in Hellgate Roller Girls in our uh, video on demand page, and you can see kind of what they do and kind of what they're all about. Uh, the course uh, fee is $80 plus the cost of gear. Uh, limited spots available, and you better sign up now. You can... Um, Log on to MissoulaEvents.net for more information about this and more. Um, here are some of the uh, events happening um, tomorrow night. Jazz at the Plonk will be playing at 8 p.m. Open mic at the Broadway. Dead Hipster. Oh, nope. Dead Hipster. No more Dead Hipster. Um, they apparently did not get the memo at MissoulaEvents.net. Rock and Karaoke hosted Aaron B. Rock's One-Sided Friendship. Um, which would be at the VFW. It's going to be a, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a heavy metal rock show because VFW panders to that as well. I am pretty much done talking with my mouth. I have a nice little uh, video for you guys, which features 
MCPS um, concerts, and it's going to be a long one. So this is how I'm going to end my show. Um, you guys get a kind of little taste on some of the MCPS fall winter concerts that Missoula Community Access Television has filmed just this last month. It, it, it involves... Um, uh, orchestras, bands, and choirs, just to kind of give you uh, an idea of what you guys can expect this next month of programming on Missoula Community Access Television. Um, thanks for joining me, guys. Once again, I want to thank Larry and Colleen from Meals on Wheels, the Missoula Asian Services, um, for, for providing such a great service for, for, for people who are homebound, who want to uh, who, who want to um, get meals, and they're always looking for volunteers to deliver uh, meals for people through the Meals on Wheels program. If you're interested, you can go to MissoulaAgingServices.org to inquire within. And um, if you want to learn more about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. If you don't want to uh, type in all that, you can Google Wake Up Missoula. We'll have our YouTube, our Facebook, our Twitter, all sorts of wonderful social media things that I only use to spread all these wonderful short videos and the whole show just for you guys. And um, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and here is all your MCPS concerts highlighted.